Okay, you guys, let's take a look at module six, which is all about pricing beverages, specifically on and off premise pricing. Real quick, I do want to make a note about what is and is not on and off premise. I did notice that last week during module five, a few of you had mentioned that uh, tasting rooms would be considered on premise. I did want to clarify for you that when we use the terms on and off premise, it is only with regard to three-tier distribution. So with that in mind, tasting rooms don't actually fall into the category of on-premise. Any sales that come from a tasting room are known as direct-to-consumer or DTC. So just wanted to be clear about that. On and off-premise are terms that we use specifically when we are referring to three-tier distribution. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page, let's go ahead and take a look at our first slide here. So this week we're going to be taking a look at uh, pricing for both on and off premise. Um, I actually linked a catalog for you guys to take a look at from Noble Distributing. So um, anytime we are looking at a distributor catalog, there is just a couple things I want to make note of so that when you look through it, it'll make sense. So first of all, I just want to point out that a standard size bottle of wine is 750 milliliters. Something you just always want to be aware of whenever you're looking in distributor catalogs is the size of the package. It's really easy to goof up and find the item that you want. You see that the name matches. You don't follow the column over to check the size. You get your delivery and you realize that the size is off. So by far and large, standard bottle is 750 milliliters. There are some options. Occasionally you'll come across a half size bottle that's maybe three um, 375 milliliters, or maybe you'll find a magnum size bottle that's 1.5 liters. Just always make sure that you are double checking the area that tells you the actual size of the bottle so you're getting what you want to get. Also, we just want to set a standard for what a case is. A standard case of wine is equal to 12 bottles. Again, there are some variations that you will come across in a distributor catalog. Sometimes rare or limited edition wines would come in a six pack or, you know, a six bottle case. So when it comes to case size, just always make sure you're double checking and you are getting what you want. And then just some industry jargon that I want to point out. When you are um, looking through a distributor catalog, you'll see a couple columns um, and they reference frontline. Frontline price just means it's full price. That's its standard full price. Post office industry jargon that means sale. That would mean sale price. So if there's nothing listed in the post off column, you're going to default to the frontline price and that just means that it's not on sale. So just want to be clear with those with that terminology. So just to recap, standard bottle 750 milliliters, standard case 12 bottles, frontline just means full price, post off means that it's on sale. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So you must mark up your product to make a profit. Not only to make a profit, but it is technically the law. So in Washington state and in many other states, it is illegal to sell wine or any alcohol for less than you purchased it for. So say for example, you purchased a bottle of wine out of a distributor catalog. You paid the distributor $6.99 for that bottle, but then you turned around and you sold it to a customer for $4.99. Not only did you take a loss because you're selling it for less than you purchased it for, but that is actually illegal. Uh, reason being that um, wine is a controlled substance, it's alcohol, so a part of the pricing is controlled by law. So you cannot sell something for less than you purchased it for. That's a violation of the liquor law and you would be liable. You could potentially have your liquor license taken away from you. Um, in addition, you want to make a profit. So to run a successful beverage business, you must make a profit. Your product must be sold for higher, a higher amount than you purchased it for. Luckily, there are established industry standards that make that pricing easier. So that's really what we're looking at today is just the industry standards for pricing. So let's take a closer look at a wine list. Uh, what we have in front of us here is the wine list from the Wheelhouse Restaurant, which just opened up in the Woodenville area of Western Washington. Um, so we're looking over here, if you can follow my mouse, wine by the glass. So let's take a close look at this. So um, we have a category for white, red, sparkling, and rosé. 
And you'll notice that over here where the pricing is listed, we have two columns. So essentially what we're looking at is, let's just follow my, follow my mouse down here, CSM. That stands for Chateau Saint Michel, Dry Riesling. They're telling you it's from Washington State, vintage is 2017. When you follow it over this way, this is the price by the glass. And this is the price if you wanted to buy the entire bottle for your table. So they're giving you two price options there. So in the next couple slides, we're going to talk about how they arrived at these numbers right here. So let's go to the next slide. So on-premise margins. On-premise, again, is restaurants and bars. And on-premise margin is 400%. So they're going to mark up the cost they paid by 400%. So essentially what that means is the wholesale bottle cost becomes the cost of a single glass pour on a wine list. And the wholesale bottle cost times four equals the cost of the bottle on a wine list. So bearing that in mind, let's go back to our, our wine menu here. Let's go back to Chateau Saint Michel Dry Riesling. So we're looking over here. They're gonna charge you $7 for the glass for wine by the glass, chances are that they purchased this bottle from a distributor for $6.99. They probably added a single penny to mark it up to $7, and so they are charging you $7 for a glass pour. That way, the very first time somebody orders a, a glass of CSM Dry Riesling, they are making their money back on that bottle. The reason that they do that is because um, restaurants are um, they're working with perishable items, they're working with food, and it can be an industry that is really volatile and it can be easy to, really easy to lose money in the restaurant industry. So one of the, the um, business practices that really stabilizes, financially stabilizes restaurants is beverages. Beverages and the ability to mark them up a little higher actually cover a lot of the costs that restaurants incur. So that is pretty much the biggest reason you see these large markups on alcohol. And this week I have linked a video, an article for you guys to review that really speaks to why this is the case, but um, that very much is what's going on. So they probably paid about $7 for the entire glass, and that's what you're going to pay for a glass pour. And then over here you see it's $28 to buy it by the bottle. So what essentially happened was they marked it up four times. So if you think six dollars and 99 cents that's what they paid for that bottle it says 6.99 times 4 28 dollars so that's pretty much how restaurant pricing works wholesale bottle cost times four is the cost of the bottle on a wine list so by far ordering beverages at a restaurant is the highest price that you're going to pay for it you, you pay the most money whenever you buy at a restaurant. Okay, so let's move on to retail. So margins when pricing wine. So if you are buying wine from a grocery store or any other retail situation, um, the markup is significantly less. So we're looking at about 30%. So by far, retail is the best place for the consumer to get the best price on any kind of alcohol. So how they arrive at pricing is they basically take the wholesale cost of the bottle and they divide it by 0.7. That's going to give you a 30% margin. So if a bottle was purchased for $6.99, let's go back to that same Chateau Saint Michel bottle we were talking about from the restaurant. So if a bottle was purchased for $6.99, a retail establishment would then take $6.99 and divide it by 0.7, which would equal $9.98. They would round to $9.99 and charge $9.99 for that bottle. That's how they would arrive at the shelf price. And then on top of that, oftentimes retail offers a 10% discount on six or more bottles, which makes retail the most cost-efficient option for purchasing alcohol for the consumer. So by far, retail is going to be your best option price-wise. And the same actually holds true for beer and spirits. Pretty much all of your alcohol that is... Um, and in the retail world is about a 30% markup. Okay. So we're actually going to talk about beer just a little bit because you can often find beer in a distributor catalog as well. Very few distributors are exclusively selling, you know, wine these days or spirits or beer. 
most distributors sell all three. So we're gonna, just going to take a minute to look at beer and how that's priced out. So what you're seeing in front of you is just a look at beer by the keg. So kegs come in different sizes. So what you're seeing in front of you is a half barrel, a quarter slim barrel, a standard quarter barrel, and a sixth of a barrel. So different styles of beer would come in these different sizes. So your larger half barrels would be your higher volume beers, your domestic lagers, things like Budweiser, Miller, Coors, PBR, um, basically beers that restaurants go through in higher quantity and need to order in a larger size come in half barrels. And then your quarter barrels and sixth of a barrels, those are going to be more of your craft style beers that um, are a little higher price point and restaurants go through them a little bit slower, so they order them in smaller quantity. So this diagram is also giving you a little bit of additional information. Down at the bottom, this last row right here is just telling you how much um, these kegs weigh because they are they are quite heavy. So that's how kegs, that's the sizing for kegs. Oops, wrong way, other direction. So if you're ordering beer by the keg, this is what it would look like in a catalog. So this little screenshot right here comes right out of the Noble catalog that I linked for you guys. Um, this is Coachella Valley Brewing. This is their selection. What you're looking at right here, if you follow my mouse, this is the item number. This is the style of beer. This is your sizing right here. And then we have your cost. This is your front line, and this is your post off. So let's take a look where this arrow is pointing us. We're looking at desert swarm honey, double wit in a sixth of a barrel. So again, it's a sixth of a barrel. So it's a small. It's, about, it's the smallest keg that is offered. This is a craft style beer, so we know it's going to be at a higher price point. It's going to be a little more expensive. So when we follow it over, we see that it is eighty-one dollars front line and $81 in the post off column as well. So that's basically telling you that it's not on sale. This is full price. A lot of times um, beverage managers or bars, they just look at the, the post off column and they look for what's on sale and that's what they order from. So um, just bearing that in mind, this one is not on sale. We're gonna, we're gonna work um, with this particular item and see how it prices out at its full price. So let's move to the next slide. So pricing beer, we're looking at a keg conversion chart. When um, restaurants sell beer, they can choose to sell it in either 12 ounce portions or 16 ounce portions. So what this keg conversion chart is showing us is how many serving sizes you're gonna get out of whatever size keg you order. So we go up to a sixth of a barrel because that's what we're working with for this demo that we're running through right now and it details it out a little bit for us. It's letting us know that a sixth of a barrel is the equivalent of 5.17 gallons, which is the equivalent of 6.61 ounces. And then over here, it's letting us know if we want to charge, I'm sorry, if we want to serve it in 12 ounce glasses, you would get 55 servings out of that six barrel keg. And if you want to go with 16 ounces, you would only get 41 servings. Okay. So now let's look at how pricing is established. So on-premise beer, cost of the keg is divided by the number of servings you get. This gives you your wholesale price per serving. You take this number and you multiply it by five. This is the lowest cost you should charge your customer. And again, this higher markup is um, a way that bars and restaurants are actually able to cover some of their more expensive costs. Running a restaurant, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of ways to lose money because you're working with perishable ingredients that can go go bad before um, before people before you can utilize them. So beer, spirits, wine has a little bit longer of a short shelf life, not by much, but it is less perishable than say something like meat or vegetables. And so by charging a little bit higher price point for their beverages, they're able to make up the difference. So when it comes to beer, you're looking at about a 500% margin. That's what I'm getting at when I say you take the number and you multiply by five. So it's multiplied by five, but that's essentially shaking out to a 500% margin. So let's do the math on this and see what that looks like. So let's go back to that sixth of a barrel keg from the Noble catalog. We saw that it costs $81. Again, it's not on sale, this is full price. 
So that sixth of a barrel contains 41 servings, 16 ounce servings. We are going with the bigger serving. Uh, 16 ounces is the equivalent of a pint, just FYI. So how much um, we're going with a pint size serving. So when we do the math here, whenever we take 41 servings and we divide it by the cost we paid for $81 for this keg, we're coming out to $1.97 per serving or per pint. So that's the um, cost that it's, that's what it's costing the restaurant right there. So to that number, we're going to go times five, and that's going to give us $9.85. A bar would then typically just round that up to a nice even $10, and they would charge $10 for this pint of beer. That is a 500% markup. Again, this is spendy. This is a craft beer. It is not on sale. Many bar managers would not uh, purchase this keg unless it was on sale. Um, but that is the math behind it. And this math this particular formula is the same whether it is a domestic lager, whether it's a high-end craft brew, it's always going to be about a 500% markup on, um, on tap beer. So that's how pricing is worked out. That's essentially the deal. So that's just what we needed to go through for this week. Um, that's our last slide. At this point, you'll go back to module six and review the linked material and use that to get through this week's knowledge check. All right, that rounds out our slides for this week, and I will check in with you guys later.